So you know how we're going to start good news. Good news, good news since the last meeting, since two weeks ago. Who's got some good news? Got two properties under contract. Awesome. That is awesome news. Who else? I took a Zillow call and I put a property for $725,000 under contract. Wow. Really nice. nice doctor from Cincinnati. And most of the time, I don't even want those calls. Wow. I answered the phone. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Who else? So who worked on their Hot 100? <laughs> All right. Did you call any of them? Some. Yeah? Did you get any referrals? I did actually yesterday, but it wasn't really did my call. It was just in the water of the lighthouse. That's all right. From someone on my Hot 100. Perfect. Yeah. There's not always going to be a direct correlation, but we know that we always get paid for our activity. Sometimes now, oftentimes later, but always eventually. Good. Anybody? I'd like to share something. You know, the, um, I guess, script that you talked about, um, like, I really like working with people like you. Well, I had been on a semi pre listing <laughs> uh, presentation a couple weeks ago. And I use that when I called back to talk to them again. Uh huh. And it made me feel so good to make them feel good. And I went over, took some paperwork over to them about an issue with their property, and they said, you know, in next month we'll list their property. But I really felt that that helped. That. That's awesome. I love. I love that script. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Sometimes we don't take time to make people feel good, and who doesn't like? being made to feel good. And as long as you're genuine and you're authentic with what you're saying, it does make a difference. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Wanda. Who else has good news? Um, I did what we talked about after our call mm -hmm. um, with the affirmations. And once I started really dropping into myself, they just started flowing. I recorded them. Um, nice. I've had awesome. some other stuff going on emergency-wise, so I haven't been able to really continually focus on that, but that's over with now, so I'll get back to it. But it felt really good. It was my own good. Words, my own feeling, my own energy, you know. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so that, is... that call really helped me. Oh, good, yeah. good. I'm glad, I'm glad. Anybody else? All right, we're gonna kick off today and I completely failed to buy new batteries, so I'm going to have to use the computer to advance our slides. So, it's not a great picture, um, but do you know what that is? The rock here, what that's called? It's waveform rock, right? Do you know how that's created? Do you know how nature... W-A-Y? Wave. Wave. From that ocean. The water. The waves formed it. Over time, between the high tides, the low tides, the water created those formations, right? Now, could the water have done that in a week? No. <clears throat> could it have done it if it did it a little for a few months and then the water receded for some crazy unknown scientific reason for four years and then started back again, would that have likely have happened? No. So my point here is consistency, okay? Consistency. Why is consistency important? Well, if you're inconsistent and you have a period of time where you're not contacting somebody, that leaves a wide open space for them to develop a relationship with somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, Patty Nicholas, you guys know Patty? Um, years ago, I was working with her, and she said the craziest thing happened to her. She gets a phone call from somebody she doesn't even know who it is, and they want her to come and talk to her because they want her to list the house. She walks into the house, and sitting on the kitchen table was a stack, literally about this high, of just listed, just sold postcards that Patty had been sending for the past 10 years. And she had saved every one of them. 
Now, had she sent them out for a year and then maybe not sent some for a while? or the, Do you think this woman would have kept and, and called Patty on that? Now, I'm not saying you have to do something for 10 years to get a result. Hopefully not. Yeah, <laughs> Hope, hopefully not. But that's pretty strong, right? You guys know the brand Ritz-Carlton, right? And there's like 59 properties, 60 properties that they have. One of the things that they do, has anybody ever worked for Ritz-Carlton or know anybody who has worked for Ritz-Carlton? One of the things that they do is they have a list of their 20 um, values that everybody carries around on a piece of paper. And every single morning, there is a 15 minute phone call for every employee that is working to talk about one or some of those values and how they've embodied it. So is there any surprise that the Ritz-Carlton has the brand that they have if they are consistently focusing every single day on the values that they stand for, right? So it's consistency. So when we're talking about it for you guys, you know where we're going with this, right? Um, so consistency is going to create momentum for you, okay? It's fantastic to get something done and to get a listing, to get a house under contract. But what typically happens for a lot of us is we get that house under contract and, oh, we're going to get it in an MLS. We're going to schedule the pictures. We're going to do all this. And what are we not doing consistently? Making calls, doing those things that we know are going to continue to move our business forward, right? So it's important because we. what happens when you lose momentum? God. And what does it do to your head? It's so frustrating when you feel like you've got to start all over. So we know that consistency creates momentum. We also know that it creates confidence, right? How confident are you when things are happening on a regular basis, when you are consistently doing what you need to do? What does that do for you? Okay. The other thing that's going to happen is we start talking about your processes. The other thing that is going to happen is if you know what your client is going to have happen to them from a communication standpoint, a system standpoint, how much more confidence are you going to have when you're having conversations with those people? Huge. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is it creates habit. Okay. Um, right now, especially if you're new, you don't have any habits. You don't even have, when you wake up, you're like, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do today, right? We don't, haven't created habits. For those of you who have been doing this a long time, you've probably created some maybe not so great habits. And you guys know, I've said this before, if you've ever worked with me, I tell everybody this, there was a study done of successful CEOs, not just any CEOs, <laughs> actually successful CEOs of what they did first thing in the morning. Do you know the number one thing that they didn't do first thing in the morning? Check email. Check email, right? How many of you start your day by checking your email? Come on, be honest. Text. Yeah. <laughs> then email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you hear what you're doing. You're saying to the world, okay, I'm awake, so I'm ready to react to anybody who decided it was a good idea to contact me. How crazy is that to start your business day? As the owner of your company, does that make a whole lot of sense? So what we know is your schedule is your lifeline, right? Now, I've had at least one call with everybody. And what I know is nobody is really using their schedule the way that they could. In fact, we um, had done some research, and you'll see it in Procrastinate on Purpose. Only 8% of people use their schedule consistently throughout the day, right? And we're not saying just an appointment here or there. We're talking about consistently using their calendar for their day. But when we looked at those people that we considered multipliers from, like in Procrastinate on Purpose, almost 90% of them did. Huge. I told you about Elon Musk, right? The five-minute intervals right? Your schedule is your lifeline, okay? And here's the fact of the matter. Success is never owned. It is only rented, and the rent is due every single day. This is from Roy's other book, Take the Stairs, okay? 
So when we take this, we combine it with this concept of consistency, we know that our schedules are lifeline. What do you think we're going to do today? Come on, guys. What are we going to do today? We're going to put together your schedule. Right? So I want everybody, so did you get that Excel spreadsheet from Nikki yet? Okay. Nobody did? There was an email from Nikki that had an Excel spreadsheet. She might have sent it a while back, but I thought she was going to resend it. I want you to pull it up. It's an Excel spreadsheet, and it basically has just like the days of the week and the times, starting at the morning and going on down. Real simple spreadsheet. Okay, so um, let's talk about, so how many of you have read the chapters four and five in the um, Procrastinate on Purpose, at least, those chapters four and five. Did you read it? Hmm? Four and a half. Okay. Well, you were reading this morning when you got here early, so kudos. You're almost there. So do you remember them talking about, do you remember him talking about categorical scheduling? <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to create today an ideal schedule, okay? An ideal schedule. Now, here's what I want you to think right now. Immediately, some of you are going, yeah, right. <laughs> Come on, be honest. Am I right? Isn't that your first thought? My first thought was, how the heck am I going to follow it? <laughs> yeah. So what we want to create, here's the concept. Is if you don't know what's ideal for you in your business and what it is you want to <laughs> do, how the heck do you know if you ever get there? Right? How do you know if you've actually done everything you wanted to do except for the things on your to-do list every week? We don't create a gauge for ourselves in that. So that's what we're going to do today, okay? So let's go through the categories that you know you need to put on your ideal schedule, okay? So let's think through them. We need income-producing activities, right? And these are the ones... Um, these are not all income producing activities. These are just activities. I don't know why she put that on there. Um, these are some different activities. What are income producing activities? How many hours a week do you guys want to do income producing activities? Has anybody done the math? 60%. 60% is what you want to do? Everybody's number might be different. Wanda, how much do you want to, sp how much of your time do you want on income producing activities? Um, the start of the day, two hours. Two hours, so 10 hours a week, mm -hmm. okay? Who else has a number in their mind that they know they want to do? Mm -hmm. Two hours a week. Yeah. Now, I'm going to I mean, two hours a day, 10 hours a week. Um, anybody else? That seems kind of light. Show me. Show me. No, they don't count. So let's talk about income producing activities. Income producing activities are not showings, they're not showing houses, they are doing things to develop and nurture new potential prospects in the door, right? Even if you are working a lead, it's not income producing activity, okay? So basically filling the pipeline. Yes, 100 percent, 100 percent filling the pipeline. Now, if you are brand new and you have nothing else going on, I'm going to tell you, as hard as it is, you should be spending 80% of your time doing that. I will tell you, if you're Alina or if you're Wanda or somebody who's got, you know, great business, I'm not trying to, to um, leave anybody out there, but that number needs to go down because there's obviously other things you're going to have to do, okay? If you've been in this business any length of time, like if you were worked this business last year, let's do a quick exercise, okay? I want you to think about the average number of hours you prospected last year per week. Okay? You got that number? Got any idea, Alina? None. <laughs> Maybe two. Okay. My numbers analyzer is not good. Like how many per week? <laughs> What was the average per week, Wanda? Do you know? Oh my gosh. If I did three or four. Okay. So think about this. So let's use two just as general because a lot of people really don't spend more than two hours in a week prospecting. But let's use two. Let's assume you did that 40 weeks of the year. So we're going to give you, let's assume 45 weeks of the year. So we're going to give you seven weeks for July 4th, 
right? For Christmas, for Thanksgiving, for your birthday, whatever, right? <laughs> Seven weeks of off. 45 times two is 90, right? Am I doing my math right? So I want you, if you earned commission last year and if you worked and you think two was the right number for you, I want you to take your income and divide it by 90. What do you come up with? Your commission last year and divide that by 90. Oh, good. Okay. And, and Wanda, if yours was maybe three hours a week, then maybe you want to use um, three times 45, whatever that is. I can't. 135. Is that right? Yeah. 150 divided by what? Maybe you use divide yours by 135. So the number that you came up with right there is your prospecting time per hour. That is what your prospecting time is worth. If your sales came from your prospecting call. No. No? No. Sales period. Sales period, prospecting time. There's not always a direct correlation between I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling and I'm getting this referral and I'm calling this person and this person is buying. I'm not. Part of prospecting is you developing and nurturing those relationships and making that just part of what you do. Okay. Especially when you get a lot of business from referrals and from your sphere of influence, uh -huh. okay? But I want you to think about the amount of time you're spending prospecting. Now, it can be dials, it can be in person, it can be an open house, right? And then, and then it, you, so you divide, so you take your income, you divide that by the amount of hours for the year, and then that's, that's what your time is worth. That's from what you could income, you yes. So it. here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to think about, right? Because that's usually a pretty big number. It's a very big number, okay? So let's say, what, what is your number, for instance? Well, last year, it was a really bad year. So okay, but... It was like 600 just over $600. Okay, $600. Yeah. So think about this, guys. So if, if, if in the past, you did two hours a week, now let's just say you doubled and did four hours a week. And we're still only talking about four hours a week, right, guys. Right. So let's take four times um, uh, 45. No, we're going to do a, just two times 45 because it's two extra, right? Well, okay, go ahead. Do four times 45. What is that, 180? So four hours times 45 weeks. 180 times, right, times 600. Oh, because this is your yeah. Because that the 600 was just one of the numbers. 600 is 108,000. So that's the money that we've missed. I've missed. You've missed. Yeah. I see numbers that are $1,000, $2,000 here, guys. I've had years where it would be that high. <laughs> of prospecting time. Yeah. Tell me. The years that I did really well were the years that I prospected <laughs> regularly. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> right? That is your prospecting time per hour. It's a far more important number for you to know than what your time is worth per hour. Right? Because we spend time on all kinds of other stuff. It's not making us money, it's not saving us money, it's not even helping us do anything. We're wasting a ton of time. The most important number for you to know is what is my prospecting time worth? So now, if some of you now have that number, how does that help you know how many hours a week you want to prospect? Okay? So how many hours do you want to prospect now? I would love to do 10 hours a week. Perfect. Well, you can do 10 hours a week. But you've got to know, the first step here is figuring out, because the number one activity that you need to be able to know is how many hours of income producing activity do I want to commit to each and every week consistently? So does everybody have that number? Wanda does. Who else? Pam, anybody else? Terry, anybody else? How many hours? Do you know your number, Terry? Okay. You got your number? Okay. Elena, are you good? All right. <laughs> so we're prospecting could count like 
like, you're going to go sure. have lunch with, well, I mean, I know you're struggling with this. I'm wondering, like, yeah. what can I What exactly count? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, okay. Um, I'm going to go have lunch with people I sold a house to last year, and their sister's going to be there, and I just have a feeling sister's going to be looking for a house. Does that count? Yes. Well, yes, but what I would say is you better, you need to make, you need to have more specific um, <laughs> goals and ideas about that when you're counting this as prospecting. Okay. Yes, it counts. Uh -huh. But I would be asking for referrals of both the sister and the family, right? I would be making sure that you're making good use of that time. But does it count? A hundred percent it counts. But I need to set myself goals. You really do because it's one because what's gonna happen is you still want that number to be meaningful, right? And so that number should go up every year too. If you figure out what your prospecting time is worth this year you would hope that you're getting better with your prospecting so that next year your prospecting time you don't make more money just because you prospected more you're making more money because you're prospecting more and because you're getting better at it snowball. right yeah. okay, right so each of your hours in in 2022 each of my prospecting hours are going to be more uh, i'm going to be more fruit from yes like yes so that number not only are you prospecting more but that number might not be 600 it might be a thousand or it might be 1200 okay right so is everybody clear on what constitutes an income producing activity Christy's still going mm. well, no I'm thinking like I'm like I'm like giving myself permission to count some of the fun things I do <laughs> you but you can but listen here's what I would say to you most people if you're not sure what you should be doing in this and you're thinking about this think about where you've gotten your business before it's like I told you about Brian treble right he bocce league and happy hour but he held accountable to those two things but it worked but and you know what he wouldn't have thought happy a bocce league or happy hour should be prospecting time but it was for him yeah. because when he did those activities he was having real estate conversations he was getting prospects he was getting leads and he was closing business so yeah bocce league was pro was prospecting income producing activity for him might not be for jonathan but it was for him right now I want you, let's open up your Excel spreadsheet, okay? The one she sent. Oh, the blank. The blank. I like the pretty one. Yeah, well, you're going to create your own pretty one. You're going to create your own pretty one. So the goal here is for us to think through a perfect week. I don't want anybody getting hung up. We're supposed to open what she sent us, or I just got confused. Yeah, the blank one. Okay. Do you see it? That's that's. I've got a blank. No, it looks like this. Monday, okay. It's got your dates. Okay. Go back to the email and the second okay. one she sent. Yeah. So the goal here, and I first of all, you guys have to just stop worrying about what we're doing here and open your minds, okay? Because what we're doing is here is creating perfection. We know perfection is perfection, right? So I don't want you to get hung up on how you're going to make this happen, how you're going to follow it. We first have to establish what perfection would look like. Everybody okay? Everybody able to, to go with me here on this little journey? So the one thing, the first thing I want you to do in this calendar, in this ideal calendar, is put any big rocks, you know that analogy, big rocks, little rocks, sand, water, that whole time management analogy put in any big rocks in your ideal calendar right now that you know you need to like sales meeting because that's something you should be going to that is same time yeah. okay put that in there and I want you to color code it now for an activity like this um, what I would say is um, there you can highlight you can go to that little Oh, it's changing? Sometimes it's so It's the first and third Tuesday? Or the second and fourth? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ours is different from yours. There's a Key Largo and there's an Alamrata. Oh, they're doing them separate. Okay. Well, then just take on your ideal calendar then. Let's go ahead and benefit of the doubt. Mark off the as if you were having it every Tuesday for now. 
Okay? Caravans of them too at the end. Yeah, so, yeah. and it starts at nine, mm -hmm. right? So we're just. And then we have a monthly meeting. You can be both on the on the first Wednesday of every month. Okay, so what I want you to do here is only account for the, the one with the caravan and not work because you only have those every other week. Mm -hmm. So let's just be ideal here and let's just count for one. Okay. Is that fair enough? Yeah. So block it off in your calendar, and I want you to color code it. It does. So block off the right amount of time, but I want you to color code, and this should be a color that is kind of like I, for this kind of stuff, I use like that gold color because it's kind of yucky and it's doesn't really, it's necessary, but it's not going to bring money in the door for me. Okay? Everybody with me so far? If there is anything that you have personally that you know you need to do or want to do at a certain time of day during the week and it's consistent every week, put that in your calendar now and begin deciding what color you want to use for your personal time and color code it that way. If you have date night with your spouse and it starts at 5 o'clock, then block that out. Okay. Everybody with me so far? You got it? Got it. Got it. All right. Thank you. Pam got it. Everybody else got it? Yeah. All right. I didn't go that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. All right. So Pam got it. Okay. So is there any personal time? Make sure you block your personal time. Right? Make sure you block your personal time if there's something that you know consistently every week you want to have happen. Even if it's you just want to make sure you're done at 5 o'clock then block off that time after five. Whatever it is, remember, this is perfection, guys. Perfection, okay? Boy, is my summer calendar different than my <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's gonna be 100%. 100%, and so you've gotta decide which one you wanna do right now. But I would encourage you to make sure that you have, you've done one of each. Okay, but just choose one now. Question. Yes. If you try to make, like, say Sunday, like right now with crazy work schedules and a kid, we try to do family day Sunday, no work impossible. Yep. Would you recommend blocking all day? Yes. Or not? Okay. Yes. Yes. You know, um, Jamie Angle from yes. Colorado. Mm -hmm. If you listen to her voicemail, ever. I hate it. Well, but I, you know what I love about it? <laughs> Saturdays by appointment only, Sundays is family day. I mean, to make and that you know, commitment though. It's, I mean, huge. it's huge. Well, and here's the thing, you've got to do what's comfortable for you. Um, you don't have to put it on your email. You don't have to, here's the thing. This is your perfect schedule, okay? Okay, all right, so everybody got personal time and everybody got the, big rock on there, whatever that is, sales meeting, okay. right? I gotta go back and look at personal time. For me, it's easier, like I just blocked off my prospecting time for the week, that meeting, lunch time. Okay, well we got a lot more to put on here. Okay. <laughs> is it gonna cut out my personal time? Well, <laughs> no, but that's, yeah, you notice the order in which we're doing this, guys, right? Yeah. yeah. So, right. The, the things that are important. These first. are the things that are significant. So Let's keep. Is personal time going to be like when I get up in the morning and I have my coffee? We haven't even addressed that time, time yet. Okay. So That's a different thing we're going to write in there. The mornings will be different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So really it's just when my day ends and then my. Like if you have kids that on Monday yeah. and Wednesday you have to be, pick them up at 3.30 or. Right. Well, then, if you know you need to go home every day and yeah. walk the dogs, yeah. that needs to go in there. Oh, wow. Okay. Drop off, pick up. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Make your personal time a fun color. Mine's purple. Okay. How to do the colors? Yeah. Pam can tell you. Okay. So we've got, yes, did you guys have a question? No. Okay. So we've got our big rocks. We have our personal time. Okay. Now let's go to income producing activities. 
Okay? Everybody's got the number of income producing activities. Now I want you to give at least a tiny bit of thought to what your best conversion income producing activities are. Okay? For most of you, that's not going to be calling FISBOs and expireds. That's not the highest converting activity that you do. It might be an activity, but it might not be the highest converting activity. I want you to think about the highest converting activity you do from an income producing standpoint. When is the best time to do that? Morning. For Wanda, it's morning. It might not be for Christy. For me, it's morning. Time to leave. But would I like And I don't want you to do prospecting calls. Do I need to be more specific? We're going to get there. Okay. We're going to get there. Trust me. We're going to get there. Okay? okay? But I want you to decide, and it might not be a two-hour block every morning. It might be an hour in the morning. It might be an hour in the afternoon. It might be an hour at lunch one day and an hour in the afternoon. It could be two hours at lunch. I want you to think about what you do and where you want to put it. Okay? And I want you to fill in the right number of hours according to what you just decided you wanted to commit to. Okay, so for you it's 8 to 10 or whatever you, nine whatever, 9 to 11, Monday through Friday, right? But it's not going to be, just because Wanda's doing that, I want you guys to hear this, that's not going to be the best fit for many of you. Probably not for you, Christy. Mm -hmm. So I want you to give some thought to it. Like you might have an hour at lunch every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and then some other times, whatever. Now, I always put my prospecting, my income producing activity is green for money. Just exactly yes, yes, money. yes. Green. Make it whatever color you want. There you go. Okay. Let me know when you guys have done that. Everybody got that? You got yours all done? All, all done? Good. How I many couple, hours? No, I got a couple hours left. How many hours of prospecting time are you put in here? Because you've got 60, so that would be 24? Is that what you're committing to? Um, this is a bit is more that? than that. Okay. No. All right. Yes. Would you recommend putting this all in one time block or splitting it a little morning, a little afternoon? I th so I'm going to answer that two ways. First, it depends primarily on the type of activity that you're doing. If there's not a huge difference between what you need to do and if you are going to create a calendar with integrity, I recommend splitting it up. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that, why I say that. I don't recommend you splitting it up if you don't think you're going to do it. Okay? So for a lot of people, especially when they're new, they need a two-hour block and they need it in the morning because that's the only way they're going to knock it out. I don't like mine that way. Um, and I know I'll do mine because if it's on my calendar. But the reason I like that is I like the break. I like an hour at a time. I like being able to, to change activities. And it allows me to be more focused for an hour block of time. Because it's like, man, when I've got that hour, I'm on, on that hour. And then I know I can change activities. For me to do something like that for two solid hours is sometimes just too much. But even if you take, I mean, for me, just take a break, right? Everybody's different. That's what I'm saying. This is your perfect calendar. This is ideal for you, right? Okay, everybody got their prospecting time. Okay. Now, based on your goals, listings versus buyers, does everybody have an idea about how many listing appointments they need to have a week to meet their goals? You do. Who, Wanda knows. Who else knows? How many listings they want to, how many listing appointments do you want per week? To reach your goals. I'm getting a lot of blank stares. 
Okay, so let's do this math real quick, okay? How many listings sold do you guys know that you want? Let's say in a full year, how many do you want? Um, listings sold, I want 20. 20. What we know is we've got to add 20% to that because we know we sell 80% of the listings that we take. So if you want to sell 20, you need to take 22 or 23. We'll call it 22, right? What is your listing conversion rate? In other words, if you have a listing presentation, what percentage of those are you going to walk away with the listing? I'm going to say 70%. Okay. So you're going to take seven, 22 divided by 0.7. What's that come to? How many? 31. Okay. So that to me translates in one every two weeks. Is that right? Actually, no, more than that. You actually need three a month on average. So on your ideal schedule, you would want to account for one listing appointment in that week, right? going to get you more than what you need, but some, some weeks you won't have one. But remember, this is a perfect week. So for you, you need to put into your ideal calendar when that listing appointment's going to be. So I want you to go ahead and do that because you know what yours is. Everybody know how many listing appointments they want per week? Everybody got? If you don't know, I'll walk through the math with you. So tell me if you don't know. And remember, it's your ideal calendar, so put it wherever you want it to be. So if you want to do your listing appointments Thursday at 3 o'clock, well, then put them in your perfect calendar Thursday at 3. This is your world right now. Everybody got it? A listing presentation is an income producing activity. Keep it green. Okay? Unless you want it to be a different color for yourself. But it's still green, it's just a different color. Right? There you go. Perfect. Okay. Perfect solution. Okay, good. I like it, Terry. <laughs> Great idea. Now, here's the thing. If you know you're going to do a listing presentation, you have to have time set to do the CMA and to prepare for it, don't you? How long does that take and when are you going to do it in your ideal calendar? Okay, put it in there. Now, in, 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 in activity like doing a CMA, you should do at the time of day that it doesn't make sense for you to do much of anything else. Right? So you don't want to take your ideal time and do it. You want to do it either late in the day, you want to do it, like for me, I do those kinds of things during lunch because I know I'm not going to call one of my prospects during lunch and likely get them. Right? If you have an evening a week that you work later hours or you want to work later hours, that might be the time to do it. Does everybody know how long they need to allocate for that activity? No. Okay, good, good. Any more? I can do. <coughs> well, that's the font. That's the color. font. Uh, but that one's not working. Go now. to um, insert, maybe. No. All right. So we've got our listing appointment and we've got our CMA work, okay? Now, um, let's talk about a couple of other things, all right? Let's talk about the mornings, okay? We know that starting your day with email is not what we want to do, okay? And the answer is you've got to color code it first and then write it in. Oh, thank you.
Thank you, Alina. Thanks for that, Alina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know how we start our day and how we end our day are going to have a lot to do with the su success of our day. Okay? Um, if anybody ever read Miracle Morning in here? Okay, good. Great book, isn't it? Um, so what we want to do is we want to have a ramp up time in our morning. And we want that to be prior to when we want to start our first activity. Okay? Now let me describe to you what ramp up looks like. Ramp up does not look like looking at your email and voicemail and your text messages. Ramp up means I'm looking at my calendar, I am planning my day, I am moving things around and making sure that I am on track for the day. I am putting together lists or anything that I need for my day, I am preparing. I am ramping up to start my day. It absolutely is not checking email, voicemail, things like that. And you should allocate 15 to 30 minutes in your calendar for ramp up time. But if you don't check your email before you do that, then you're going to have to go do it again. Yeah. Again? You mean, your of course, you're you going to... have to go change it. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Bear with me. Okay. Bear with me, okay? I promise. Because here's the problem. Everybody gets so hung up about wanting to check their email and do all of this first thing in the morning. The minute you do that, you are beginning a reactive mode that is almost impossible to get out of. Okay? The most important thing you can do is start proactive and stay proactive as long as you can. Here's the thing about urgency, and I don't know if you've gotten to this in the book yet. Urgency comes about from a couple of different places. Urgency comes about when somebody else's emergency or problem, they insert it on us. And that happens all the time, doesn't it? And it, it may not even be real, but it's how they're feeling, and they are putting that urgency onto you. It happens a lot, doesn't it? You have a buyer that's freaking out over something, and it really isn't urgent. It's that they're putting that on you because it feels that way to them, okay? Or because we haven't done something in the time frame that we know we need to do it. But oftentimes, urgency comes from a lack of perspective. Now, I'm not saying that there are not emergencies because there are 100% are emergencies. But urgency oftentimes come from, comes from a lack of perspective and a lack of attending to doing the things that we know are important in the best time to do them. Okay? You guys are in a job where everybody's putting their emergencies onto you and trying to make you change your priorities, right? It happens. It's, it's a different business than most any other business because we're talking about people's whole lives here. And we're talking about another agent on the other side who might be counting on this deal closing for them to pay their mortgage. We've got very high emotions here. But, and the tendency is for those people to gall you and insert that energy, that, that urgency onto you, okay? And when we go and get, we can empathize with them but when we lose perspective, we've heard it. You've been dealing with the realtor on the other side who was just being outrageous and unreasonable. Haven't you? It's because they've lost perspective. And usually it's because they need that deal really badly or they have an emotional connection to the buyer or the seller. Right? How many times have you guys experienced Brian losing that perspective? A long time. Right? Don't you think he has a lot of those things coming at him? The difference is, yeah, the, oh, yes. yes. The difference is there is a perspective that he maintains, right? And I know what I'm saying is, is hard to wrap your mind around, but one of the best things that you can do is get control over your calendar, over your schedule, and make purposeful decisions about how you're spending your time and maintaining that perspective, okay? So email in the morning, you will lose perspective for you of what you need to do to keep your business moving forward. It, those emails are a reminder of 
those emergencies and things that are urgent from other people and you can fill we're, we're going to fill those in and we're going to handle them because they need to be handled what if what if it really is something urgent about a closing that day and i understand how do you I'm not telling you not to check your email all day long, okay? I'm not at all. But what I'm saying is, for your own mindset, you don't want to build your entire day around it, and that's what happens, right? It is what happens. I don't care who you are. So here's what I would say about email, and we might as well fill this in in our calendars, okay? Because I'm actually going to suggest that you schedule when you're looking at your email every day. And you can schedule it two times a day, you can schedule it ten times a day. But I'm telling you, I would like for you to schedule it. Think about this. I know what I'm saying and I know how hard this is. Think about this though, okay? When you email somebody else, some just normal person, what is a reasonable expectation that you have of them responding back to you in email? Immediately. Six hours. <laughs> Within the hour. Business? Yes. Mm -hmm. Quick. Okay, so why do you, so why do you have that, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but why do you have that expectation? Um, because I believe that the uh, other agents that I've done a lot of business with, um, the best agents, respond to you right away. Okay, so. And we get the deals done because mm -hmm. they are there. So do, so here's the thing, it can be email, and if you needed something urgently from somebody, would you email them or would you text them or pick up the phone and call them? I would call them. Text or call It depends yes. on the person. Okay, yeah. but you hear what's going on here, right? We lose perspective about email. But if you, if you get an email that somebody sent you at 5.30 in the morning, Mm -hmm. And you read it, I read my emails 6.15, 6.30, mm -hmm. because that's the time that I have to do it. After that, I go play pickleball. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to get those things done and out of my way so that then those are the hot button items that might need to be taken care of. And then I progress. I don't want to mess up what you're doing, and if that's working for you, that's fine. I don't want to change that. I think most of the time what happens is you read those emails, and while you're playing pickleball, you're thinking about how am I going to fix this or what's going to happen and what do I need to do for the rest of the day. And it has an effect on your ability to be present and enjoy your game as well as how you prioritize the rest of your day. That's all I'm saying. And if that's something that's an issue and you don't want it to be that way, it doesn't have to be that way and I'm offering you an alternative. Is that making sense? When I check my email first thing in the morning, especially if there's something on there that I was, you know, not expecting or whatever, it affects me emotionally. Even if it allows me the ability to handle it right then and there and then move on. And that's fine, then, then, then do that for you. But I know for a lot. I'd be thinking, God, I wonder what's on my email. Is this something well, but that's because you've created a habit of that. Yeah. You've created a habit of that, though. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because that works for me. And that's fine. That's fine, and I'm not, but I'm just saying that is not a habit that works for a lot of people. And once you can break that habit, it's amazing to me, the people that I talk to who don't check their email until they get into the office, they have their morning with their family, they are present with their kids, their husband, their wife in the morning. They have their process in the morning, and it changes their day. Yeah. It changes their attitude throughout the entire day. I had a guy that worked at, um, he sold, uh, he had a team that sold life insurance, insurance products and things like that. And, um, and what he learned about himself was if he came into the office and first thing he did was read for just 30 minutes, he was better able to deal with anything that came up throughout the day, just mentally, emotionally. He just was better prepared. His team noticed, his family noticed, and it made a difference. 
So I'm not trying to tell you not to do whatever it is, but I'm saying most of the time what we've done, we've done out of habit, and we don't recognize that it might not be serving us. Okay? He came into like, the office and he read? For yes. He read not his what? emails? He no, book. He came into the office and he read a book? A book for 30 minutes. Why didn't he do it at home? <laughs> In bed, <laughs> in bed, in bed, with his cup of coffee. <laughs> that was what he wanted to do. But it made a difference. <laughs> I know. That's all right. I was going to say, I hear that. Do you think it makes a so difference foreign. if you're a morning person? Because I mean, I'm a morning person and I like to get things done also. I, it's I mean, not about, so here's, here's the thing, you guys. My here's what it, start early listen. Listen to what you guys are saying. There is an association that you guys have of getting things done, right? That does not include income producing activities. I think everyone's different too. Like I get distracted at home, so I would have to leave the office yeah. as well to go to the office to actually get something done. I have two young kids at home and I honestly have to go to the office to get something done. Not right. Like right. All over the place. The but I think we've got, we've got to shift our mindset. The work that we do, that Parkinson's law is true. Our busy work, and I'm not diminishing by using the term busy work, but that amount of work will take up as much time as we allow it. And right now with the mindset that you have, that's coming first. And until you change that, your business will not change. So we can, if, if, if you want your business to change, you've got to be open to shifting your mindset around this. Okay? And I get it. I know how hard that is. But this is a tool that can help you do that. Okay? Your calendar might not start early enough for you. In fact, when I told Nikki what time to do it, I normally will start it at 5 a.m., because a lot of people, at least on the mainland, want to do that, but there aren't as many people down here that start their day at 5 a.m., at least in my experience. So I had her start a little bit late. You might need to add some time in the morning to yours, Alina. Okay, so does everybody have ramp up time? What now, about that? Do, do you recommend, like, <clears throat> kind of ramping up for your, for Tuesday, Monday night? Could that work? Like, in addition to ramp up time, we have ramp down time at the end of the day. Can we back up one second? Yes. Can you just say ramp up time, what it is again? Yes. Okay. This is time for you to look at your day, to decide what is your biggest priority, what you want to do, if you want to change the times on anything, you want to move anything around. This is the time for you to get prepared for your day. Because the goal of, the, of your calendar every day is to reduce the think time. Your calendar is there to allow you to begin the day and execute. You're going to move from one activity to the next activity. You don't have to think about what you're doing because everything you know you want to accomplish is in your calendar for that day. Okay? And that takes a little bit of mental preparation. And that's what we're talking about. Some people need full, full out 30 minutes. Some people are fine with 15 minutes. I'm fine with 15 minutes, but, you know, I know that, I, that everybody's different. Does that help you? Okay. Now, in addition to ramp up time, we want ramp down time. You guys have to have a process where you are shifting off. You have to. And I don't care what time that is. If you want it to be 7 o'clock at night, that's okay. But if you want it to be 5, then make it 5. If you want it a different time every day, do that. But that ramp down time should be where you look at, okay, is there anything that I, I skipped today? This is an, a, the opportunity for you to evaluate your day, and you might need to make changes for the next day. This is the time for you to do that. And right before your ramp down time, you need to be checking your email, okay? That needs to be right before your ramp down time. Check the email before the ramp down time. Yep, right before the ramp down time. This is going to be the, the opportunity for you to say, okay, I'm going to make sure I don't have any loose ends there, and then I'm going to ramp down. 
Okay. Now, I'm curious, believe it or not, we've accounted for income producing activity, we've accounted for listing presentation, we've accounted for doing the CMA for that, we've accounted for your sales meeting. There's still a whole lot of time left in that calendar, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's think about some other things that we want to make sure that categorically we want to include in there. Public. <laughs> there you go so um, one of the things that is usually left off of people's calendar and I want you to guys to add it in here is prep time okay mm -hmm. now right now in your prospecting time it's just a general remember these are categories okay in order for you to be effective in these categories, you have to know what you're doing in these categories, don't you? So for your prospecting time, even though this is a general category, you need to put time on your calendar that you are preparing what you're going to be doing in that particular prospecting time. So this is time where you say, okay, maybe it's on a Monday, maybe it's on a Sunday, maybe it's on a Friday, but you say, okay, Monday from 10 to 12, I want to call Sphere of Influence and I have my list and I know who I'm calling but I know that Tuesday I'm gonna do an open house I don't know whatever right we've got to prepare because remember this is on Excel this is not in our calendar but this is what we're shooting for so in our calendar we're actually gonna have the detail okay we're gonna have prep time to plan for what we're gonna be doing in our income producing activity Is that making sense You will. This is going to be an evolution as you begin working with it. It's definitely going to be an evolution. But you definitely don't want to give up on this halfway, translate it into your calendar, and not revisit this. This needs to end up being ideal for you. Okay? All right. So now let's talk about putting some other things in this ideal calendar. Obviously, you want to factor in things like showings, lead follow-up, email, listing feedback, customer service, those kinds of things. Now remember, this is perfect, okay? Now for your email, you've got to decide how often that's going to be. Sometimes people start out with checking it at 9, 11, 1, 3, and 5. I just realized something, and I probably can change this. My emails, so I'm working on my computer, I'm in IQ, I'm making phone calls, and I just got a notification of an email that somebody just signed something. And that's the problem. It's not a problem. Don't open it. Or turn it I, I, I mean, I know what it is. <laughs> but don't open it. And I want to send it off. <laughs> it's like knowing what you got for Christmas. And so can we stop those notifications? Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, the loop. You can. I hope we didn't get that on tape. <laughs> See, I don't. I don't if you're waiting for something <laughs> to come in, I think that's times, crucial. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to do that. It's going to change my life. It's going to change your life. It really is. Did you know? They usually say I'm going to have to take the hour. My watch, my computer, everything. Always. What's going on? Well, we're just, I'm just saying, I never use email notifications. Right. There's no reason to. It's distracting. It's a fill in. It's just a comfort. It's a comfort thing. It's just something no, to do. Annoying, actually, to well, well it I, should. I'm I glad. Yeah. But the conflict <laughs> is we're in a business where time is of the essence. Well, 
it not have the notification? Like that may be something that's important that if she doesn't send that now, she loses. So if she sends that in 25 minutes, is, is that likely to significantly change the trajectory? It can, but then she'll let you know that. How often have- I've never been in that situation where if you don't respond within seconds, you lose a yeah, day. No. Yeah, no. silly. No, I mean, if it, it might be something at 5 p.m. that has to be taken care of, right? But not- it's, okay. it's our mindset around it. it, is. it we is. have created this thing in our minds that our value as a real estate agent, because everybody else is licensed, everybody else knows the properties and the keys, so my value is going to be that I respond within seconds. And that's complete bunch of crap. Come on, it really is. Each and every one of you are valuable for your clients, not because you are going to respond within seconds. You are bringing value to them for so many other reasons. Right. It's I mean, not. Let's just say you're with one client, and that's just as important as waiting. Exactly. For a client. What would you do in it's that a, it's a comfort thing. It's this is an it, this is something that just is a insecurity thing, and I get it. I, I, as, as much as I understand it, what I know is it is keeping you from doing the exact thing that you know you need to do to move your business forward. Okay? It really is. And I know how hard this is, guys. And I got to tell you, for a lot of people, they can't take this on in one sitting. So I, I recognize the gravity and the size of what I'm asking you to do as we go through this. And it's going to be an evolution. I can't wait to take this home so my husband sees it and sees how crazy my day is. <laughs> well, no so so let's go through a few things because you bring up a great point that I want to make sure that we talk about, okay? So um, email, I want you to plug that in there. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I had, years ago, there was a guy in town who wanted me to do this big thing for his, him and his team, coaching perspective wise. And I would email back and forth with him, and every time I emailed him, he responded. I could tell that he was doing 14 other things when he responded back to me. I could tell. And if you think other people can't tell when you're doing that, you're really underestimating people. But I could tell he was doing 14 things, and I said something to him. I finally said, look, I said, I got a question for you. I said, I know that I am not ranking up there in importance of all the things you've got going on. But I'm really curious with the way, you know, that we've been communicating back and forth. Has, have you ever had anybody take issue or, you know, have a problem with what was going on there? And he said, oh, my God. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, just yesterday I was driving and I saw one of my buyers, one of my clients, in a car with another no. real estate agent. That's horrible. Did you wave? Did you wave? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like this. The one finger wave. But he said, you know what it was? He knew that he had not been given that person. There was not, he had not given them that attention that they needed, and he was constantly distracted. And he knew, he said, you know what, I know that that probably just cost me, because she was looking like, I don't know, a million and a half, something like that. He's like, I know how much money that just cost me. And he goes, I'm, it's amazing that you even thought to ask me that question. Right? I'm telling you, when you have your email and it is your complete focus right now, nobody focuses on email. They just are doing it in the middle of other things, oftentimes, right? When you're doing that, people know that that's the response they're getting we from you. We make ourselves think we're busy. Yeah, and that's not serving you. The fact of the matter is you have plenty of time to do everything that you deem important, that you want to do, you have plenty of time to do it. You just have to make priorities. You have to be deliberate in how you're choosing. So and, if and like also for me, like I was like, well, I can take advantage of because I have a 20 minute drive from my mm -hmm. house to the office, so mm -hmm. that's a time when I can listen to Audible, listen to the book, do you know mm -hmm. affirmations, whatever. Your drive time should be in your calendar. It is. Okay, good. I'll put it in. Good, good. Yeah, you can listen to and. And or that is not time, like for me, my drive time, I have calls. Yeah, or calls. 
that and but in part of my prep time either I'm doing it or my assistants doing it in my prep time in my drive time those names phone numbers it's all right there so I literally just pick up my phone when I'm driving and I hit the button and I'm calling that person right but that has to be done in my prep time I have to know that that's what I'm going to do or else I'm not prepared is it making sense so for email, do what's a little bit uncomfortable for you, but comfortable enough. And then you can figure out what's going to work for you. So, does, so then do you, like as you're going through your day, keep a little note, because you're checking your emails. You're not, then also you're not sending any emails. You will. It, so I don't, I'm not going to check until I'm ready to pr deal with them. Right. So what, but what I mean is like as you're going through the day, you know, you, you make a call or this or that and then are you making instead of like you hung up a call and you're not sending an email to follow up right away you'd have to like kind of make a little note for yourself it's right. like okay when it gets to be 2:15 and I have my email time that's when I'm going to send all those emails I had been thinking about or from those calls from those calls but that you right? could be like, doing that while you're calling, it right? kind of depends so if I'm prospecting yeah, yeah. yeah, what she's saying is now. You deal with the prospect call then. Like, say, yeah, say yeah. you're on a call with a prospect and they're like, yes, I would love to receive your marketing right. package. I usually wait until after I'm done prospecting and I make notes and then I go back during another time and I send all that stuff out. But I make my notes while I'm making the call, but I don't actually spend the time to send the full email with the. But that's prospecting. That's, yeah. that's your prospecting time. But say you get a call on one of your listings, mm -hmm. or you get a Zillow call, mm -hmm. and that buyer wants to schedule something, and you know, can you? They sign on Zillow, but could you send me the link with more information? Can you check into rental history? Yeah. Or when do you do that? Do you yeah, do, I do that do when later you hang when up the phone? No, no, that? I do it later. Mm -hmm. okay, I just make a note. Yep, we'll get I'll you. Get I'll it get it to you by tomorrow within. morning at the latest, or this afternoon at the latest. And I make a note that I have, you know, like a things to do note while I'm on the call, and then I go back and I make sure I set all of that up. But I get right back to making the calls. So that that was a really uh, Yeah, but then I mean I get right back to doing my prospect or whatever she was doing. And, and I think the, the idea here is she is setting expectations with that person, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we are having a conversation that's, and I mean a real conversation, the problem is we don't listen. We just don't listen. We're in our own heads. We're thinking about what we've got to do. We're thinking about what we want to say. We're thinking about what we want to have happen, and we're not listening. But if we are really slowing down here and we're having a conversation, first of all, we're going to know what kind of urgency that person has, and we're going to be able to set appropriate expectations with that person. And so what we might want to say is, it sounds like you're really wanting to go ahead and look at some properties. I'll go ahead and send you a quick link while we're talking and I'll draft it, I'll send it while we're talking to them. But as far as the, the rental history and things like that, would it be okay if I got that to you by first thing tomorrow morning and I can also send you blah, 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 right? But if we're not listening, if we're, we're in our own head, we create all these scenarios that aren't even true, right? We actually make things urgent that aren't even urgent. Because they're urgent for us, because we might have a deal. Right. We don't. We, it's just an opportunity, right? But it's about mindset. We oftentimes have to slow down to speed up. And that's what you're talking about. And you know what? I'll bet you the, the, the accuracy and the content that you were sending, doing it that way, is far superior to that agent who's trying to knock something out in between things, right? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Angie, um, I, I think something that I hadn't even thought about, like in 15 years, I got a call. It was after our first um, class, right? Mm -hmm. And I got a call to show a property, and it's during our business meeting. And I always say, of course, no. But I don't do it around the rest of my schedule. Mm. Guess what? It always works out. Right? It always but works out. It seems out. like we're always working around another agent's mm -hmm. schedule, not 
our schedule. And there's nothing wrong. Sometimes all you have to say is, oh yeah, that's 11 o'clock. So listen, are you showing other properties? Can we maybe do 1130 instead of 11? Right. Chances are they're going to be, yeah, that's fine. They don't need to know, they don't that, need to know that it was your prospecting time or it was your email time or it was, if you I'm. Were showing a property or working with the exactly. Company, you would not be able to exactly. Do that anyway, so. Exactly. Right. It's a mindset shift for us. Yes. Would you say approach texting to say as emails? Because I just, I mean, I'm sitting here listening to you, but I'm responding and I'm like, no, this is taking me away from and this is not urgent. Would you look at that the same as email? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So there are certain times of your day in your task. Remember, this calendar is allowing you bits of focused energy on tasks that you can do, right? And so you need to be selective, but I am a big proponent of the do not disturb function on my phone, right? You can exclude a family member, you can exclude a child, you can exclude whoever, right? You can exclude an assistant, whoever it is, but use the do not disturb on your phone. Huh? It yeah. <laughs> it takes one second, right? And, and you, you, I'm not saying to do it all day, but there are times where creating that focus is going to do wonders for you. You're going to do more in that 15 minutes or 20 minutes that would normally take you an hour otherwise. So be selective, but use it. It is something you can use. Now let's talk about your schedule. Now remember, so you've got to put showings in here. You want to factor in um, your emails, showings, customer service, okay, listing feedback, Factor those things into this calendar, okay? Remember, make it perfect. Then, the other thing I want you to add, either on Friday or Sunday, is a block of time for you to prepare your calendar for the next week, okay? Now, I know that you're not gonna know everything you need to do the following week. However, you have a good idea about what the next week is gonna hold in store so that you can go ahead and make some major adjustments and then tweak them in the mornings, okay? So often we look at our day as a day instead of part of a week. And so if we don't get something done in the day and it doesn't happen, we forget we have a whole rest of the week. And if we would have looked at it as a week, we could have shifted it and done it at different times. How many times could we have moved something to Monday that we didn't get done on Tuesday, but because we didn't do that, we didn't get it done on Tuesday and therefore we didn't get it done the whole rest of the week, right? So we want some planning time for the future, for that next week, okay? Now, here's the thing. Once you create your calendar for the next week, check it against your ideal calendar, right? Look and see, do I have enough green? Do I have too much yellow? What's going on here? Periodically look, because this is an Excel spreadsheet. This is not your calendar. This is a guide for you to use. Okay? Now, once you have done your calendar, who shares their calendar with anybody? Dad used to share his with us all the time. I know he did. I know he did. It's because... How many people looked at it? It's not... It's not a matter of that. Yeah. I looked at Ed's calendar. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I didn't care where Ed was. Yeah. Here's the thing though, there is someone with whom every single one of you should be sharing your calendar for lots of reasons. For that friend or spouse who inevitably calls you when you're trying to prospect or do something, right? For that um, accountability that you need, for that assistant. There is someone, at least one if not two people that you need to be sharing your calendar with, okay? that will help keep you on track and that will not continue to interrupt you at the worst possible time, right? Because I don't know how they manage to do it, but they do. A lot of people do because their mom will call, I don't mean, I, that really, 
I have so many clients who will send it to their mother because they'll say, mom, listen, this is my calendar for next week and, and, and lay out, these are the kinds of things you can call me. If you need to call me, just try and, you know. Just like the Geico commercial. Yes, it is just like the Geico commercial. <laughs> just like the Geico commercial. Okay, does everybody have a good start with this? Okay, all right. Is everybody feeling okay about starting to implement this? Does everybody see the value in starting to shift? There's some of you, I know your mindsets have already shifted a little bit and that's great. Don't let that go. This is actually gonna be, what did you say, a calendar of integrity? Of integrity, yes. I had no idea what it was gonna look like. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been working how long in this business? Well, I had it one in my head. Yeah, well. <laughs> was it color coded? <laughs> <laughs> all right, questions, comments, anything at all? is compare my reality day to what you have just created <laughs> and for the next week I'm literally gonna write down like a diet. Love it. Time I'm awareness gonna, log. I'm gonna actually write down what really do I do. Yes. Because um, my phone tells me how long I've been on it. It does. Horrible. So I'm actually going to do a comparison. I love it. What a, a mess it really is. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. If we were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, yeah. I would have had you do that prior to this. Okay. okay? Yeah. I really am going to do that because it's going to make me aware of my deficiencies. It's amazing. Every time somebody does that, and you, don't, you, can, you understand, I have clients who can do it for only three hours, and they're like, oh, my God, I can't even do that anymore because I just realized this, this, and this. And I have other people who do it for a day or two or a week. I've never had somebody do it that didn't walk away with some huge aha moments about how they're handling their business. So I love that, Terry. I love it. Anybody else? Questions, comments? I think Terry's idea is a really good one. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not it's like that does not have Doesn't a lot make you want to throw up, Terry? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Only because I, I can relate, yeah. okay? I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. This, none of this is easy. I get off these conversations sometimes with clients and they go, okay, because I think I'm going to have an anxiety attack with what you're asking me to do. Like, I get it. We'll take baby steps. And I know this was a giant step, and I know that your implementation is going to have to be whatever's comfortable for you. But I, I hope that you're at least committed to continuing to take steps forward on this. This can be a game changer for you guys. I promise you, okay? All right, anybody? All right, thank you. Thank you for thank being you. here the day after the July holiday. <laughs> thank you, Wanda, thank you.